I'm joined by ENCA's political editor, Vuyo Mvoko. Mr. Mvoko, thanks for your time. Professor Karim, because that's who that press conference was centered around last night. It's a very simple message for, from him. He says, the lockdown period has bought us time to prepare for the worst. Have we prepared adequately, is a question. Well, that's a question, um, you know, those uh, in charge or entrusted with this uh, huge and enormous responsibility have uh, to answer. But uh, I think all the, if you look at everything they were trying to do yesterday, the optics around it, the things that were said, and how those things were said, you could see uh, that there was a deliberateness about virtually everything um, that they were doing or saying. Now... One, uh, or the first one, which I think was uh, probably the easiest, you know, to uh, juxtapose, or to put in juxtaposition, humility and pride. Pride um, in the sense that uh, what has been done up until now seems to have worked and worked well. But humility in that we haven't gone through the worst yet. In other words, we are not going to escape you know, uh, uh, that exponential curve. The question is, um, to what extent? And therein then comes the responsibilities that all of us will have to assume from our respective little corners. Because in part, it was to mobilize the country to say, the things we've put in place now have actually worked and they've worked well. Yeah. And we've got to keep on doing that. But hey, we've got to do more. Yeah. And that is where now everybody has to play their role, including um, the state, because this is uncharted territory. We've known that there have been issues around our police, you know, um, that the culture of Skopsky tent, you know, um, has been there from the days of apartheid, you know. And even if you look at how, uh, you know, the soldiers and the, uh, uh, the police have been deployed, I haven't seen any in the suburbs where I live, mm. you know, they're in the townships. And we've seen some of the things that the videos we've seen and the allegations that have been leveled against them. So there is a huge responsibility on the part of the state to get that right. Yeah. Because if you're trying to get people to buy into what you are about to do, you've got to make sure that everyone is on board. There are no people who go outside and say, no, but your soldiers are treating us badly. Sure. Uh, Vuyo, this media briefing by the Minister of Health alongside Professor Karim comes at a very interesting time when calls are being made for a smart lockdown as opposed to a generalized lockdown, which is what we are under right now. Why are those calls coming in? It's in order to boost uh, economic activity, which is uh, heavily suppressed at the moment. But the question is, does government accede to those calls because to, when I watched that press conference, it was almost as though it's a response to these calls for a smart lockdown. It cannot be. It cannot be a response to uh, the calls of a lockdown. I mean, uh, last week when the president visited uh, the Rentwater, which is where there's that like big. Uh, um, uh, operation Indeed. Uh, where the uh, National Department of Water and Sanitation has taken over the, the, functioning, the function of distributing water throughout the country, every little corner um, that we have. Yeah. I asked him uh, what was the one thing that is, that is giving him sleepless night or that he's really, really worried about. And he said it was the economy. Because out of this we've got to now think about what we do next. Because Every country in the world is going to be affected negatively um, by this. But remember, other countries are more equipped than us. They have huge reserves that they have been able to tap into. Their economies have been doing well. Ours hadn't. Long before the virus struck, we had a recession. We didn't do, or at least what was done didn't give us the result that we wanted. We've recorded, uh, 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 you know, uh, the highest unemployment um, rate in years. Which is projected. We still haven't done. It's going to get worse Which is now. projected exactly. by some economists to go upwards of 50%. Exactly. And that's where now leadership from, on the part of government has to come in. Now, if we couldn't do that before the virus hit us. Now, can you imagine 
how much of a task let me squeeze this in let me squeeze this in quickly there are a group of uh, economists and health experts who wrote an opinion piece which simply uh, is calling for the end of the lockdown and perhaps a transition to the smart lockdown that we're talking about and this is their reasoning the overall um, view is that a protracted lockdown will not necessarily have the effect of reading the country of the coronavirus therefore the only time the only time uh, or the only thing that will eliminate this virus optimistically will be if we get a vaccine and that's if that's between 18 to 24 months there's no way the country is going to remain under lockdown which takes us back to our first point about has government prepared adequately so that when they lift the lockdown albeit in phases they do manage to contain the spread you know um, when uh, both uh, the minister uh, Dr. Mkize and Professor Karim started um, their respective contributions. They made the point that the purpose of that briefing was to really get to the facts and speak to the science. Hmm. Right? In other words, whatever politician may come with our smart language, <laughs> you know, uh, that may make this perhaps less palatable or this one be seen to be doing better than the other or having better uh, ideas than the other. The fact of the matter is what you cannot now, where we are, suddenly, you know, come out of lockdown and, 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 and life becomes normal. That is not going to happen because it will undo everything that uh, has been achieved up until now. It has to be gradual um, uh, and it has to, uh, and someone has to police it, you know, because, yes, when people come out of the state we're in now, they will be, you know, wanting to do or go back to their normal life or do even more exciting things that they've had time yeah. to actually think about during, during this okay. period. So that cannot, that cannot happen. That simply isn't going to happen. But how we do it is going to depend, as I said right at the beginning, to uh, the attitudes of South Africans who say, We've got to deal with this thing. We've done well so far. Let's keep on doing what we've been doing and find better ways of coming out of the situation we're in currently, but we cannot be reckless yeah. about it because if we do that, then everything we haven't done up until now will simply be undone and the worst will, 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 actually, will actually hit us. What's going to be interesting now is what the government, when the government missing, minister of uh, finance has been missing in action, um, and so point. he and his colleagues now have to put take the nation into their confidence, just like the, 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 that interministerial uh, committee and the cabinet did yesterday. The private sector also has to come to the party. Everyone has to roll up their sleeves and say, let's argue, let's debate, bring in the science, bring in the lived experiences of the people, and then let's see how we move forward.